Hello Michelle and welcome to Beaver Curling Log Tossers and today at your request I am reviewing Emily in Paris. Uh, why? <laughs> Just why? A bit of a preface to this, um, I am reviewing this from a bit of a weird position because I um, went to Paris for six months, I lived there for six months doing an internship um, I am a native English speaker. I am learning French. I got quite good while I was over there. Um, so I am reviewing this through the lens of someone who um, has gone through basically what everything that it wants to tell you Emily went through. And I can say while the premise of, you know, an American going to Paris for six months and having to adjust to the culture and uh, the shock and um, adapt to everything it is a solid idea for a show i mean i of course i say that because i went through it myself i think there are there were comedy moments while i was out there there were some difficult and sad moments while i was out there so it's definitely a show worth producing but emily in paris <laughs> did not uh produce it well um for those of you who don't know emily in paris is the story of uh emily a young american girl who uh gets a job in paris and uh just has to survive out there and to be honest that is just the show um it, 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 there's not much going on it tries to tell you that there's a lot going on there really isn't it's kind of just a lot of events and lines and dialogue and stuff like that with, with, with nothing <laughs> there um so I, I if i have to start on um i try and start on things that i liked about the show if i don't like enjoy a show i try and talk about anything i did enjoy about it this section is not going to be very long um but one thing about like about the show is that the show isn't very long i have only watched the first series i am never going to watch series two i have absolutely no interest in watching another episode of this show which should never have been made um but i will say i thought it's the first series is 10 episodes i thought it was 10 episodes of 45 minutes it's actually more 10 episodes of about 25 minutes so the fact that it was so short made it a lot easier to get through by about the f fifth or sixth episode i was so ready to be done i was so close to giving up i was so bored um every episode is exactly the same nothing really happens nothing develops at least nothing interesting to me um it's a very very boring show i found but um i would you know i will give it the compliment of it's short so i didn't have to suffer for that long another thing i would say about it is that i um of course there has been a lot of controversy surrounding the show for various reasons some of which i will discuss some of which so many people have discussed to such an excellent extent that i don't really need to talk about it anymore um so i was very much warmed about how awful it would be how racist it would be how homophobic misogynistic bigoted um arrogant it would be how boring and unfunny and unromantic it would be i was warned about basically everything that was wrong with this show and i'm inclined to agree that basically everything that is wrong with the show is just everything in the show so i was given fair warning about this so to be honest first of all this podcast is not going to add anything new to the conversation this is just my personal views on the show and also because i was warned about how terrible it was be i think i rather than being angered or annoyed by it i was just bored when i was watching it i ended up doing some knitting i wrote a couple of letters it was i had quite a nice day actually um and again it was nice and short it was about five out less than f about four and a half hours of my life which the show stole from me <laughs> um but I, I was warned about how bad it would be i was prepared going in um as for anything else that was good about it other than the fact that the torture was short and i knew it would be torturous so i was ready um there is some good acting i do like lily collins um i don't think she was great in this but she was fine she was very watchable she's generally very charismatic um some of the direction was very pretty i think they had a beautiful color palette all these really lovely vibrant colors it really suited everything um i wasn't a huge fan of the costumes i know some people really liked them and starting to iconize them i wasn't into them i didn't think they made the characters stand out they didn't make sense for most of the characters um emily's costumes were incredibly inconsistent um i'll talk a bit more about that in a bit but more could have done to make the characters um, stand out a bit more 
or individualize the costumes if they were kind of going for a really cool costume design which it looked like they were because some of the looks in it were just bizarre um some of the directions okay they did capture a lot of the beauty of paris but um this show in, all in all is incredibly superficial it has zero depth so but you know it looked pretty i guess in some bits other bits not so much other things disturbed me um but yeah that's kind of all i can say to compliment the show so um rather than going through episode by episode because that would be torture and i'd have to remember everything that happens in the show uh, i'm just going to give a general overview of the show so general overview emily in paris is a romantic comedy except it's not first of all emily now um the show tells you that emily is the main character she isn't because emily isn't a character she kind of is just a way for the audience to exist well i mean there are lots and lots of shows where the main character is very bland and kind of doesn't do anything and it's just a way to carry the audience through the experience of the show um but this one stands out to me because none of the characters are actually characters they kind of all just exist to deliver dialogue none of them have any consistent personality traits the only one i can compliment really is sylvie it's very uh common to hear from people who watch emily in paris that one of the characters is very good sylvie um was brilliantly acted by i think uh philippine leroy boulieur i think that was uh i think that's the name of the actor she was uh very well acted and she is a pretty good decent character she isn't great but considering the show she was a kind of godsend they really needed her in order to you know capture anyone's interest but no emily's not a character she kind of just exists um and i think for that reason she didn't annoy me as much as she annoyed some people i know some people absolutely hated her i couldn't hate her because she would have to be a character for me to hate her and she wasn't um a lot of the character this whole issue with the characters is that the sh- like i said the show has absolutely zero depth and this is shown immediately with the fact that we don't know anything about emily or her backstory when we meet her um we don't know how she got into the workplace that she was in or anything like that um we we're told uh that she markets pharmaceuticals and then goes to work for the french marketing company uh, a lot of the stuff surrounding her job is really really bizarre and i am going to get onto that in a bit but the thing is she's also incredibly fashionable wears a lot of chanel so you know her personality or lack thereof does not match up with anything we're told about her uh she has no family so we don't you know we don't ever get any indication of homesickness from emily or that you know being away from america is anyway difficult for her that is so much of the struggle of being abroad that was a lot of the struggle for me when i was abroad just missing my family having to make new friends and struggling to do so missing the friends and family i had back home um she has a boyfriend in the first couple of episodes they break up because she leaves for paris we don't know anything about her relationship how long they've been together how serious they are how difficult this is for them we don't know anything about them so it's impossible to care about her boyfriend who is a, again is a face but does not have any kind of personality trait at all there is nothing there um with her boyfriend um i think honestly think that the show would have been a lot more likable if um emily had kind of felt a bit lost very unattached and very adrift um the reason emily has to go to paris is because her boss gets sick and can't well her boss is pregnant and her boss can't go so she has to go in the place of her boss i think it would have been an interesting take to have um emily be a bit more wayward kind of like that where she's not necessarily the person who decides things and follows through on her decisions but rather maybe she's been pushed around a bit and maybe she's quite relaxed and you know um just drifting through life and actually this move to paris is kind of something that motivates her to start being a bit more proactive and confident and self-assured i think it that would have been more of a journey for us rather than um having her be a real go-getter at the beginning and then not have any development through the rest of the show i think it would have been cool if she didn't have a boyfriend and the reason we didn't know much about her family is because she didn't really have much of a life in chicago not a life that she was proud of certainly so she decides that while she's in paris she's been given a fresh start so she's actually gonna be a bit more proactive and use this fresh start i think that would have been a really nice story um because that's what the year abroad can do the uh you know i went to um like i said i went to france for uh six months for my year abroad and 
one thing that people who travel abroad on their own, especially when they're young, will tell you. It teaches the, you that you have to look after yourself, that, you know, you can, you, unfortunately, well, you learn that you can essentially drop your whole life and start a new one. And I think it would have been interesting if we'd really seen this with Emily, where she kind of either really struggled to drop the life she had or she was going from not really having a life to trying to construct one for herself. And a big move abroad can be a really, really good way of doing that. And they kind of didn't do that. Um, so, yeah, Emily, she doesn't have any backstory um she is incredibly ignorant i don't really believe the level of ignorance she has she really thinks that she can just sort of speak in english the whole time it tells you that she loves paris she loves this culture um she doesn't know anything about it <laughs> um so it, it would be really funny if they really highlighted the fact that she only knew about the stereotypes of paris you know she orders a pan au chocolat it would have been funny if you know she kind of thought oh that's the only if her ignorance had just been highlighted a bit more but it never really is um the reason i think her ignorance ever improves is so that the show can continue to make jokes about paris and the differences between paris and the us and basically uh, some really xenophobic mocking which i mean i'll talk about in a bit but people have commented on how xenophobic the show is um but this level of ignorance never changes so they can kind of keep making these you know really bad intended jokes um and that doesn't really help emily because she gets absolutely zero development i thought here she never seems to make the right decisions um not that her decisions are so damaging although some of them are it's just she never makes decisions based on what's good for anyone else she kind of thinks that the uh universe surrounds her so her work she thinks that her um colleagues should adjust to her rather than she adjusts to them um her boyfriend she thinks that he should be on board with her going away to paris even though she didn't really ask him um or you know they didn't ever really talk about how this might affect their relationship she never considered her relationship in her decision to go abroad um but she thinks that her boyfriend should just work with it anyway um she is shown to be the kind of uh, person who doesn't take no for an answer but she never really learns to adapt she never really um thinks of anyone else one thing that really struck me was that um, she judges her boss Sylvie is having an affair uh, with a married client, which is a bit of a um, point in the show, which never really goes anywhere, like basically every point in the show. Um, and Emily really judges Sylvie for what she's doing with this married man. But at the same time, she kisses her friend's boyfriend multiple times and eventually sleeps with him. So she has a problem with Sylvie being complicit in cheating on someone but she has no problem with her doing it and this isn't a matter of um emily's horizons are broadening and she understands that well actually um you know through doing this she kind of understands things from sylvie's side no she kind of continues judging sylvie up to a point um and never really reflects on her own behavior um because she never really reflects on her own behavior and the show never makes her um nothing that happens is ever emily's fault she's always the victims of circumstance um and you know nothing everything that happens is normally because of the um arrogant uh french that's why all, that all the problems are caused by the french um so you know when she first kisses someone she um she realizes um that uh, so she, when she first kisses I can't remember the guy's name I think it's it's either Lucas or Gabriel so the guy let's call him Gabriel I think he is called Gabriel um, so she first kisses Gabriel um, that's one of her issues because Gabriel is in a relationship but she didn't know so it's not really her fault um, she loses a watch which was really important to her company except she didn't lose it a uh, drunk person that she was sort of supposed to be looking after lost it and she's still responsible um, and also her boss and her colleagues just seem to hate her for absolutely no reason so all the issues that come up in the show almost none of them relate to anything that Emily does or you know it's just issues that she has to deal with so the show is unwilling to address the fact that emily has any kind of flaws or you know could cause any problems again being on the year abroad like i said there are many moments of comedy there are many moments where you just mess things up you know i went to a job i would work at the job six months you are not an intern in a company you've not had the proper internship agree uh, uh, experience if you don't mess stuff up at some points i got things wrong i advise people to do you know um 
to do the wrong things. I didn't correct mistakes when I was proofreading stuff. You, you know, you get things wrong sometimes and it was absolutely OK for Emily to mess up and then have to fix what she's done. That's, you know, the um, th that's a structure that lots of TV shows use. But instead, no, nothing is ever Emily's fault. When when you really think about it, um, her bot again, it says her the show basically makes her colleagues hate her for absolutely no reason. Um, really the reason they hate her is because um, she's come to live in France, she doesn't speak French, she is in French class a couple of times, but she doesn't really make any attempt to try and improve or talk to them in French. Um, and she doesn't make, like I said, she, Emily's not a character who tries to adjust herself to, um, you know, help other people or, you know, even think of other people. She kind of only ever thinks of herself. Um, so when you look at it through that lens, her boss is actually, Sylvie, is actually incredibly sympathetic, but the show never lets it be so. Um, they kind of make Sylvie flip-flop between nice to Emily and being really nasty to Emily in a way that never, ever feels natural. Um, it's not like their relationship improves over the season. It's just Sylvie jumps from hate, absolutely hating her guts to having respect for her. Um, and also another th thing in the show I find really problematic is that um, Emily's ignorance often leads her to win, uh, you know, or win people over, such as she wins over her boss um, because in one episode because she got the dates confused um, because, you know, in America they write the month and the day and in France, of course, they write the day and the month, which is the correct way. Um, sorry, Americans. I mean, there's none of you are listening to this because only three people listen to this podcast. But <laughs> uh, she gets the dates mixed up. After living in France for a few weeks at this point, you would think she'd be beyond this. But like I say, her ignorance never improves. Um, so Emily gets the dates mixed up and then has to uh, immediately change plans and basically uh, forces her friend to keep his cafe open so that, she, you know, um, she can... Uh, have a host a nice dinner for her boss and this helps uh, her uh, her win Sil Sylvie over Sylvie seems to have more respect for her after this but the thing is this whole issue was created by Emily's ignorance and just because em and yes Emily was able to get them out of it but it doesn't really signify why Sylvie should have more respect for her for still being really ignorant about the, the way France works um she also wins over the public because she doesn't know how the French language works. Um, this is never really played as a joke um, because the thing is um, she um, talks about um, you know the word le vagin which is means the vagina but it's a, mas it's a masculine word um, so she you know <clears throat> complains about it and says well it's wrong that you know le vagin is a uh, masculine word um, and then, of course, this gets really popular and people say, no, it shouldn't be. It's not masculine. It's feminine. This is uh, feminine. But the thing is, it's, it would have been really funny if they just said that was just a joke about her, you know, ignorance over the French language. The fact that masculine and feminine words are just distributed arbitrarily. Um, it would have been quite funny if she had gained all of this popularity because... Um, she created this debate about Le Vagin, but it was because she didn't actually know what she was talking about. I think if they'd have, uh, made that a joke, that would have really worked. But instead, the show kind of makes out that Emily is a genius. And again, with the issue with the um, date swapping and, you know, having to go to a new restaurant, this isn't, these aren't issues which show how hard Emily works. These are issues which show that she's really, really ignorant, but yet this helps her to win. Um, and it's never played off as a joke. So Emily's power comes from her ignorance, which is a really, it's a really big issue with the morals I, in, in with the morals of the show. Um, and yeah, just in general, um, they never put any uh, groundwork in. The, the show never has any depth. Um, so there's no backstory to any of the characters, really. Uh, there's no subtlety. Um, we don't have a get information that kind of would just help situations make sense like I don't know um just information about the company where uh, uh Emily's working just some background information on that which would just kind of help things make sense we never get that the only lines 
um, that the only time we get information is when it's going to be used for comedy purposes or romantic purposes later. So everything is surrounding the comedy and the romantic part, you know, rom-com. But they're not giving us any information about anything else. So the the show doesn't actually feel like a universe. Like I said, the characters aren't characters. They're just here to deliver li- dialogue. So the show doesn't actually have its own universe. It kind of just has a an existence or a presence where you see things and you hear things but nothing really feels like it's going on because we there is no background to any of this um also one huge issue with uh, emily is that she never really bonds with people for a reason uh camille and mindy both just start speaking to her and her colleagues just start either hating her or liking her um so there is no reasons for things in the show to be happening where it's a tv show you kind of need people to be motivated by something or for some kind of cause and effect um and again you know when i was in france it's really difficult to make friends when you're you're abroad so i'd have liked to see her struggle to make friends and you know for friendship to blossom over time as opposed to camille and mindy who genuinely just start speaking to her in the street take a liking to her swap numbers and they become best friends from that point there is no uh groundwork put in there is no depth there it just you know these things kind of just spring up and happen uh a few annoying things about uh emily she is a real hypocrite um like i said with the issue with sylvie and the fact that she um emily herself is kind of involved with a guy who's in a relationship um she also talks about um, splitting personal life and professional life. It's a whole thing with Americans apparently think it's important to split personal life and professional life, whereas French people abs- just love, you know, hooking up with their colleagues and they're completely depraved and, you know, st- stereotypes like that. Um, this is, um, uh, she's a real hypocrite about that because she talks about splitting personal life and professional life, but she's constantly mixing them and also trying to, just be really really uh well trying to be uh good friends with sylvie she invites sylvie to disneyland at some point which i would have loved an episode of disneyland that would have been great um but y- you know so she's continually mixing personal professional life she draws gabrielle into all of her adventures um so she doesn't abide by her own um beliefs her only goal is to be liked um that kind of seems like she just wants her colleagues to like her she wants people on social media to like her she doesn't really have any other goals than this again i think it would have been more interesting if she'd kind of been adrift and a bit wayward and not really sure what she wanted or was doing and so this idea of being liked had more to do with her self-esteem um as opposed to she just wants to be liked um yeah and the whole show itself especially with emily um emily shows that the show struggles with showing versus telling um they make um you like emily by telling us she's a go-getter she's a nice likable person they don't actually show you this they tell you this um and also one the way the thing they kept doing is that they just keep putting her next to less likable characters um when you want her to be likable they basically found a load of uh hateable influencers uh influence who was who are vain and nasty and they show well emily is so much better than these people so we have to like her they don't really give uh show us any reasons to like her other than that there are other people in the world who are worse than her um so the showing versus telling issue here it, it it's a problem but anyway so that's a kind of round off on the issues i have with emily now the issues i have with paris okay um there have been um loads and loads of discussions about how um stereotypical everything is in paris um the show has these habit of making really random xenophobic jokes at the expense of parisian uh, or french people or even people all over the world um mindy's character only really exists in the first seasons to make americans look better um um so yeah it is the show it it embraces every single stereotype and it doesn't really do anything to combat them lots of people talked about this already so i won't talk about it too much but i will talk about issues that i had personally after like i said having uh gone and living in paris for um you know six months first of all um when i went to paris 
Um, the transition is really, really difficult. It can be really shocking. The first few days were really tough for me, you know, leaving my family. Also, I had so much paperwork to do. Uh, I had so many uh, loops to jump through. I, you know, had to find a job first So, and an apartment. So the fact that when she arrives, the, she already had a job and she had a really nice apartment um, all, all set up when she got there, just to, you know, I really couldn't feel anything for Emily after that point because I think I just all the struggles that I had gone through um she you know didn't have to go through and that is one of the if you're going to make a show about you know what it's like to travel and live abroad make a show about what it's like to travel and live abroad don't don't make this like easy comedy and just trying to set it in a different place um also why was her flat already decorated when she arrived that would have been a cool montage or transition or something to see her arriving at this empty flat and gradually make it her own although that would be difficult because she has no personality um yeah one other thing is that emily's job is never explained or outlined so i don't really care what her job is or whether or not she keeps it or anything so i don't know if she is the head of marketing for the american market um and if she is i don't know why she's doing all the marketing for like french uh, French stuff um, or I don't know if it's for like American tourists in France um, or is she the American correspondent um, to because the situation is the um, French company has been bought out by an American company so they've sent her there to be the eyes and ears for the f American company so is she a head of marketing or is she some form of correspondent um, is she some kind of manager I've got no idea. They never explain this. They never highlight this. The, her job never really makes sense. Um, again, a weird thing about when I was in France, um, the company I was working for got bought out by an international company. For, um, I was working for a French company and they got um, bought out by a company from Germany. So we had this weird international buyout situation going on. Um, again, it was really difficult. We didn't know whether or not people were going to keep their jobs. I'm sure anyone who's gone through a buyout situation has been through this. You don't know if people are keeping their jobs. You don't know what's going to happen. Um, so it is a bit of a tense situation. And it kind of would have been a good reason for her colleagues to have not liked her because they didn't know what was going on, if their jobs were at risk, or if they were going to have to change company policies or anything. Um and one other thing that really got to me, Emily could not be fired. If Emily's a worker who is on contract with the American company and has just been sent in to spy on the French company, Emily would be untouchable. Sylvie would be able to do nothing to Emily. She wouldn't be able to fire her. She wouldn't be able to threaten her job. She wouldn't be able to do anything. She might be able to request to have Emily sent back to the US because she didn't get along with the, the team. Um, but Emily would be untouchable. So, so many of the issues uh, that Emily goes through when she's at work are just irrelevant because Emily works for Sylvie's boss. So Emily kind of ranks above Sylvie. Um, yeah, just, you know, being bought out by another company, you have to deal with so much and they never address this. It's just a plot device for, you know, Emily to travel to France. Again, it would be one of these things which could have explored the differences between uh, the US and uh, you know French culture and they never really do they kind of just use it to make jokes about um, how uh, you know stereotypical well, just all uh, French stereotypes that they're you know sexually depraved and perverts and uh, arrogant and you know um, they uh, yeah so it was just uh, the whole um, Emmy's job situation I just did not care for I didn't care for the fact that she had a job when she arrived because of everything I had to go through to get a job there and they don't explain her job and her job doesn't make sense um, another thing about her job I don't know how much Emily is getting paid she seems to work for a decent marketing company but honestly how much is she getting paid because Paris is expensive it's tough y you know I was counting uh, not counting pennies counting euro cents I guess but it's tough out there. It's you're living in a capital city. It's a huge city. It is expensive. Um, but apparently, every single person in the show has just unlimited money. Um, the only person who seems to have any money problems is Gabriel because he needs to be poor for plot purposes. Everyone else just is constantly at bars and restaurants all the time. Um, they, you know, Emily wears like I say, Emily wears Chanel clothing, even though at some various points in the show she does complain about not having enough money um but she wears incredibly expensive clothing 
which doesn't make sense for her character at all um, because she supposedly is not familiar with the fashion world um, but yeah Paris is really expensive it's really you know again a kind of little subplot of um, Emily struggling financially and trying to get used to this new situation it would have been really interesting but we have to kind of just assume Emily is rich um, in order for the show to make sense but we also have to assume everyone else is rich because Mindy is you know always at a bar um, always wearing very chic very expensive clothing um, she uh, Emily lives in a really nice flat in the middle of town um, but the whole <laughs> again the flat is um, played off as being a complete dump but it's not it's really spacious um, so uh, also at the end of the series uh, Mindy and Emily start flat sharing I think if they had been flat sharing the whole time it would have made more sense their relationship would have made, felt more natural and also their sort of financial struggles would have uh, made more sense also it just would have been made you know good if uh, all their scenes together um always seem to take place at a cafe again it's just expensive over there so it would have made more sense if they were just ha sitting having coffee in their apartment which you know um looked more homely as opposed to pre-decorated um yeah the show never balances how um difficult life is for emily um when she's in paris because it's too obsessed with romanticizing Paris. Emily sometimes complains. Um, Emily's views on Paris are incredibly inconsistent because the show needs to demonstrate superficial beauty, uh, the superficial beauty of Paris, um, but it also needs to create struggles uh, for Emily. Um, again, the struggles are often um, caused by, you know, the French just being nasty for her, to her for no reason. And so they talk about, you know, Mindy especially talks about how beautiful and wonderful Paris is, but how horrible the people are. Um, some issues came up, such as the fact that Emily is said to ride the Metro a lot, that we mentioned, she mentions it a few times, um, but we never see any shots of the Metro. I'm guessing because it's underground, it's kind of disgusting down there a lot of the time. Um, there are unfortunately a lot of homeless people do live in the uh, within metro stations. Uh, this would be a very interesting take to this idea that though this show had this beautiful, um, you know, top level surface, there were issues literally uh, beneath them. Uh, Paris was built on um, various issues. Um, it would have been really nice to have had a less superficial view of Paris and a more um, one which uh, was able to critique certain aspects of Paris which deserve critiquing, critiquing without having to involve stereotypes about French people. I think that would have uh, felt a lot more natural. Um, the show again has been uh, really criticised for not being very diverse. I think there are only two characters of colour in the whole show. Um, Paris is incredibly diverse you know i lived there it, it's just you know there are people of all cultures all walks of life all over the place you cannot walk in paris and you cannot live in paris and only know white people unless you're incredibly selective um that was a huge issue for the show a lot of people have talked about it but i did want to bring it up paris is a very diverse city with many different um not just uh you know in terms of uh ethnicity and um LGBTQ but also just beliefs and ideals um so um we also um Paris also like all cities has um poorer parts of town uh the city or even parts of the city which are incredibly modern we kind of stick around a uh, very classical architecture so they probably don't move around the city that much it would be nice to just see a bit more of Paris as the show went on I think you could start off with the really classical stuff like you know Lac du Triomphe, uh, the Eiffel Tower, uh, Notre Dame, uh, do all that sort of stuff you know the Rue de Rivoli, um, do all that sort of stuff at the beginning of the show but as the show went on you saw more of the uh, the Bagne and the um, parts of Paris which are kind of a bit grittier and uh, the metro and stuff like that so as the show went on Paris became less beautiful but you still managed to have some kind of respect for it. This is all just kind of you know taking into account th this idea that um they actually put any effort into the show which they didn't they kind of just wanted pretty shots of paris and jokes about french people but again um yeah also just everyone speaks english all the time it just doesn't make sense that everyone's constantly speaking english and i get to when um 
they're speaking to Emily because she doesn't speak French, but it would still make sense for, say, Sylvie to speak to Emily uh, in English and then address the rest of her colleagues in French if she is talking to just them. There are times when Sylvie is talking to her colleagues and she doesn't really want Emily to hear or she's trying to ignore Emily, um, but she continues speaking in French, a really <laughs> clever way of going about that. Um, especially if they want to uh, paint Sylvie as the nightmare boss, would have been just have Sylvie try and speak French as often as she could. Um, also, whoever was doing the subtitling must have been high. Um, they translated the word exactement as absolutely, even though the word exactly, which is a um, direct translation of exactement, um, would have been absolutely fine it would have been exactly fine um so i don't know who whose call it was to be like exactly more the word that literally start, starts the same way as exactly let's translate that as absolutely <laughs> even though the translation of absolutely is absolutely more <laughs> um it's not a false friend it's, it's just a weird translation decision um yeah, ultimately, um, because of the portrayal of Paris, um, the story becomes how Emily struggles to live in Paris because Paris is so pretty and so, you know, perfect and everything, but the people are very, very nasty and it's full of uh, perverts. Um, uh, the only people who are nice to her are people who love Americans and idolise Americans like uh, Camille does. Um, this is such a different experience to mine. Um, there are loads and loads of issues. Uh, you know, you get some nasty people in Paris. You get some very friendly, very helpful people in Paris. Um, some people will try and speak English to you and help you. Other people, you know, will um, insist on speaking French and can't speak English. <coughs> so it, 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 there are a lot of issues that, you know, when I was uh, abroad, I went through and it would have been nice to have seen them pick up, like, you know, the language barrier, homesickness, money, um, other um, issues such with Paris, like the homelessness problem, uh, the um, poverty gap there, you know, you get some really, really rich areas some really, really poor areas. There are lots and lots of things that they could have touched upon and they decided not to because they decided actively to just stick with writing about stereotypes. Um, Speaking of stereotypes, there were plenty of other issues there, which I kind of want to run again. Loads of people have talked about this. I do kind of just want to run through them because I would feel bad if I uh, didn't. Um, I thought there were way too many jokes about the possibility of Camille being gay. Again, I haven't seen the second series, so maybe she is bisexual. But they kind of make it seem like Camille has kind of got a bit of a crush on Emily and Emily should maybe be worried about that. I think we pass the phase of seeing gay people as kind of uh perverts or predators or anything i think if uh kimi is gay she should kind of or bisexual um pansexual whatever it is they should just let her be and uh, maybe you could have had a bit of speculation on it before either confirming or denying but there were a few too many um is kimi in love with uh emily jokes for my taste um with the gay jokes uh julian is uh, again he <laughs> is not really a character he is just the gay stereotype he's a sassy um black gay man um th that's it that's all we're given but the issue is as well he doesn't actually have any kind of um op uh transparently sort of gay moments we don't see him with a boyfriend or on a date or anything or talking about um maybe an ex or anything anything that's uh directly linked to his sexuality it's more um he's just played to be gay <laughs> um that, that that's that that's the issue he's just if someone said to someone in you know the 1980s you need to act gay you would uh you know perform how um the actor plays julian i don't want to uh, criticize the actor too much because i do feel like it wasn't his fault um i think he's fine i mean there are lots of people who are way worse but he's you don't know julian is gay because he talks about it or if it's an open thing you know it because he acts um as stereotypically gay as you can imagine um <clears throat> speaking of the lgbtq side of things um I have heard different things about this. Um, Mindy starts working in a drag bar um, for her career and not because of um, because she wants a career as a singer. It's got nothing to do with any kind of respect she has for the drag lifestyle, any support for it, any um, anything surrounding her, um, you know, um, gender expression or anything. And they make a few jokes about this. Um, it kind of just felt a bit sketchy. Um, they hadn't treated uh, gay people, French people, people of colour very well on the show already. They felt like they were kind of having a pop at um, 
drag uh, uh, drag queens and sort of the, the trans community as a whole um, just to have Mindy working at a drag bar um, j- just for her career and j- just for money not with, I don't know why they decided to do a drag bar as opposed to say a karaoke club where it kind of felt like either they wouldn't have to um, deal with uh, issues which clearly the, they weren't prepared to deal with or just have you know um, Mindy be a real supporter for the drag lifestyle and be welcomed into the drag community which would have been a really heartwarming story I think um, also the show mentioned to the Daily Mail whoever wrote the show clearly reads the Daily Mail um, yeah that pit full of hell bigoted hellfire I know I said hell twice, but it's a it's a terrible, terrible newspaper. Um, yeah. Um, also, um, there's just a general tonal issue with the fact that the show continually mocks um, the French. Um, Americans mock the French, but it always makes the French look like they deserve to be mocked like this. Um, not like the Americans are in, in any way uh, ignorant. Um, meanwhile, if the um, uh, French have are annoyed at the Americans for any reasons, you know, such as the fact that the Americans in the show, you know, Mindy speaks uh, French, but a couple, you know, um, Emily never um, really gets to grips with French. If the uh, French are annoyed at the Americans for any reason, they're always shown to be nasty, uh, mean. Um, But when it's uh, the other way around, it's supposed to be justified, which just does not make sense. Um, This show isn't a fish out of water show. It's not about embracing a new culture. It's about telling everyone how amazing American culture is and how, you know, (coughs) how uh, French culture just doesn't compare. And also just in general, you're in Paris. Go to Disneyland, please. They brought it up and then they didn't go to Disneyland. You can't bring up Disneyland and then not go to Disneyland. That's the rule. I know that I sound like I'm four years old, but Disneyland's amazing. I went twice while I was there. It's awesome. Anyway, um, the romantic, the romantic, Disney, um, I just just all talking about Disney. Um, Emily in Paris is a romantic comedy. It's not very romantic. Um, so many of the, uh, Parisians are portrayed as predators. Um, he, I've written his name differently. Is he called Gabriel or is he called Luca? I've got no idea what the love interest name is. I watched this at the weekend. I've got no idea what's going on. Um, anyway, so the main uh, crux of the uh, romantic subplot is that uh, Emily likes Luca. I put Luca here, so I'll just keep saying it. I thought it was Gabrielle. Um, Emily likes uh, Luca, um, but Luca is dating Camille um, and won't break up with her, even though he seems to kind of like Emily. And he also kind of seems to just resent Camille. You know. (coughs) So I don't know what the main issue is. Again, there's no background. We don't know how long Luca and Camille have been together. For all we know, they've only been together for a couple of months. Um, all for all we know they're like childhood sweethearts who've been together for 10 years and Luca kind of does think that the fact that he likes Emily is kind of just a blip and he will fall back in love with Camille again Um, but Luca just starts hating Camille but doesn't break up with her just so that he and Emily can't get together so that they kind of stretch this out Um, and yeah there's nothing to root for they don't have great chemistry Luca again is not a character um He's just a dick who just cheats on his girlfriend and then doesn't break up with her to be with another girl that he seems to like. Um, There is nothing to him. Um, So it just doesn't work. Also, one thing I found about it is that as soon as uh, Emily uh, discovers that Luca and Camille are in a relationship... The very next episode, she hears them in bed together because um, she lives um, on the floor above Luca um, so she can hear them through the floor, which, you know, I've lived in crappy little (laughs) Frisian flat. You can hear everything, unfortunately. But it's just strange to me that... So so she can just suddenly hear them Uh, (coughs) now that she knows. Like, she would have heard something before then. She's been living there for a few weeks. Um, so it takes weeks. So were they just always at Camille's place? Or it just doesn't make sense. Like, the night after she finds out about Camille and Luca, um, I think his name is Gabriel. I don't know. 
I don't know. But anyway, the day after is that that's suddenly when she starts hearing them in bed together, when she would have heard them in bed together for ages beforehand. That's just an issue for me. Um, another thing I wanted to come back to uh, is uh, the thing about Sylvie's affair. So um, Sylvie is having an affair with a married man. It only exists to uh, hammer in the stereotype of how all French people cheat on their partners. And it never really explores this, such as um, saying maybe there's a reason why Antoine's being unfaithful. All it, they say is that, oh, his wife is probably cheating too and it's very normal. Um, they never really give much background to uh, Sylvie and Antoine. Um, they, yeah, it, it only ex <coughs> exists to serve the stereotype. Um, it does give us like a glimmer of character depth and development when Sylvie, um, we see that Sylvie is kind of more vulnerable than we think. And she says that she doesn't want to, she doesn't want Antoine to leave um, his wife because she doesn't want uh, Antoine um, all to herself or for Antoine to have her all to himself she wants to maintain some different distance we see a glimmer of insecurity in her and a bit of development but and but they break up at one point which feels really random um, we never really get to see the, their relationship the plot beats of it we kind of just everything happens for convenience as opposed to um, their relationship developing naturally in any way also um again the joke of it is that um anton's uh, cheating on his wife and you know how french is that um emily talks about how the city is full of passion and sex and claims to love french culture and the kind of uh, you know liberalism of french culture um but she doesn't really like anything that is sexually open or liberal this is a kind of wider issue of um there isn't really much representation for people in um you know polygamous relationships polygamous relationships are a real thing um they don't really get represented in tv and cine cinema when they are represented in cinema they are normally the butt of a joke as they are uh, often are here um there is no depth ascribed to it so it's kind of another way for emily to uh judge french culture even though supposedly she loves french culture and this is what you know according to the showrunners part of what french culture is um I think um, this could in be a more interesting way to feed into the sexism debates. Um, uh, you know, they talk about being sexually open and everything. Um, Emily just judging a, a colleague for who she's sleeping with and her sexual decisions. It just doesn't sit right with me. It, 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 you know, it, I think I'm kind of done with having a go at people in polygamous relationships when evidently they make out in the show that um, the, you know, the Antoine and his wife are perfectly happy to be uh, polygamous and unfaithful, um, and that's their decision, and people should get on board with that. Instead, the show continually make, judges them for it, keeps making jokes about it just because it wants to make fun of the french stereotype as opposed to either dropping the stereotypes which honestly if the show did that it you know the, the entire series would have been about 10 minutes long um instead of either dropping the stereotypes or just having a look at this this said stereotype through a new lens of well why is he cheating on his wife why have they got an open relationship is this the you know the um type of thing that people uh, do people do this sort of thing for a reason um and not make it so stereotypical about france um there's just never a moment of acceptance with the affair um there's never a moment where people you know understand their situation that they are adults they, they can do what they like um also there is an entire episode in this thing where they make bad or make fun of um bad rom-coms um but the rom-coms they're making fun of honestly sounds so much better than this this show is and comedy, um, so Emily in Paris is a romantic comedy. It's not romantic. It's not a comedy because it's not funny. Um, too many sex jokes, too many racist jokes, too many of the jokes, the timing is just off. It kind of pauses for laughter, but there's no laugh track and I'm not laughing because it, the comedy's bad. And the dialogue is just weird. Some, think, some people just say things that don't make any sense. Nobody proofread any of these scripts. Nobody proofread anything about the show. Nobody looked at the show and was like, how can we make this better? They, they did the first draft. They used the first take. Um, they did not go beyond the pitch idea. The dialogue's just no good. And nobody really thought about the comedy. Um, so, yeah, like with the dialogue, um, Emily's in Paris. Op opinions on Paris. Um, 
fluctuate all the time um sometimes she is too prudish sometimes she's too risque it's not that this is development it's just that it's inconsistent emily and sylvia's relationship again doesn't develop it's just inconsistent the whole professional life versus personal life debate um or you know there are even scenes where people say we don't talk business at the dinner table and then just start talking business um the you know Okay, sorry if the audio just sounded really weird, but basically my friend uh, just called me up. I can't be bothered to um, edit it together to kind of cut all that out, so uh, apologise if I just start repeating things. Um, also, by the way, the reason why my friend called me up is because she's sorting out her year abroad paperwork, because when you're in year abroad, it's 90% paperwork, which no one in this show ever does. Um, yeah, the plot never flows... Um, so immediately Emily having a boyfriend kind of just feels random and uh, undeveloped and then they just break up the next episode which again feels random um, just this sh- nobody thought this show f- through that no experts were consulted on any matters I doubt even the French actors had um, you know were able to give their opinions on anything um, issues crop up randomly then go away um, so many things mean nothing Emily never loses so there are no stakes there is no foreshadowing no build up you know Kami and uh, whatever is the guy's name is the fact that they're in a uh, relationship um, it just happens randomly it's not like it's hinted at and eventually revealed um, so but anyway the above reasons some of them are kind of why the um show is so uh bigoted and xenophobic um you know a lot of these things i've talked about about you know the plot and lack of development they're about why the show is bad um it's not necessarily the reasons why the show should be so thoroughly uh examined and just trashed because uh that often does lie with the um just the more problematic stuff but Again, loads of people talked about the problematic stuff. I'm going to talk, touch on a few issues that I really had with the show. One of them is, I mentioned before, Emily's workplace. Um, I can't be invested in Emily's job, which means I can't be invested in the reason why Emily has come to Paris. None of her colleagues are really characters. Um, I really wanted to like Luke and Julien. They kind of seem like they're, you know, friends and they're trying to be friends with Emily. Um, but they kind of just end up making sex jokes. Um, Luke was hinted to have genuine personality and development in the first episode. He is kind of the only one who felt bad for making fun of Emily. And he is the one who offers Emily a branch. But we don't get anything other than that. There's kind of no depth to him. It's not like he's a timid person or you know an overly friendly or a hostile person that kind of scene just exists just to make uh, Emily uh, look like a genius Um, Emily never really puts much effort into her work she kind of just comes up with ideas so much of marketing um, is um, uh, you know coming up with 20 ideas and only one of them is any good marketing you know I've no huge not got huge experience with it marketing is like not easy and I, I struggle to believe that Emily is just a genius and just brilliant at it everyone just automatically adores her ideas she never has a bad idea um, other other characters do have bad ideas or you know ideas that just don't suit what's going on um so yeah emily's just so good at her job you know there's no challenge there there are no stakes there there's no depth there um it's also just as with emily not putting much effort in again she doesn't really put much effort into learning french even though she works at a french company she never really practices with anyone again that would have been a fun thing to do where she you know often you are practicing trying to speak a certain language and then you use the wrong word or you slip up or something or it's difficult um it, it, you know it can work for comedy purposes it can work for more dramatic purposes they never really uh touched on that um another really annoying thing is like for the first episode the french her french colleagues are talking about how she is going to be a catastrophe and a disaster um there is no evidence uh that she is going to be a real problem apart from the fact that she can't speak french which uh, obviously is an issue it's an issue i had it's an issue a lot of people had for the show but they just start talking about how terrible she's going to be they start ignoring her they start pushing her out and it just furthers this idea that the french people are just mean for no reason and emily's the victim but emily is perfect um 
in that, it's also, you know, that's from the first episode. That is also when, as I mentioned, Luke is the first person to offer Emily a branch and try and be friends with her. Um, and But he s- says how Emily's ideas are new and they're afraid of them. At this point, Emily has had no ideas. All she has done is mentioned using social media, which, you know, the French know that this exists and Emily didn't create social media. Um, because of that, you know, these things where the French are just mean and Emily is just brilliant at her job Um, nothing is authentic everything is so clearly scripted Um, also there is a whole issue with um, there are hints that Emily is being harassed at work by a client Um, but this is never really um, a big thing apparently Um, even though sexual harassment in the workplace as we've learned in the past few years is a real real issue it is also an issue in France Um, this is not stereotypical of France it's just you know it is an issue everywhere in the world so the fact that she is being sexually harassed is um, never an issue apart from it just fuels uh, uh, Sylvie's petty hatred of her Um, it's not like you know the woman decide well actually um, we don't want to be treated like this or you know pitted against each other it's not like Sylvie takes harassment seriously or anyone takes the harassment seriously it's just used as a plot device to make Sylvie hate Emily Um, so Sylvie has a reason to hate Emily when really we know that Sylvie is justified in not liking her because Emily doesn't seem to work very hard and doesn't really try and you know help adapt to the team And also, again, Sylvie seems to be in a very high point in this company, which she's worked a lot to get there. And they are now being taken over, which is a really, really awkward situation to be in. Um, Also, there's this uh, one bit where the, uh, you know, one of the few mentions of the American takeover of the company, uh, the Americans send over the company commandments. Um, This this doesn't make any sense for the workplace because um, the... Um, again this is just an issue of you know things not making sense and not being thought through for the sake of having a few jokes again stereotypical jokes some of the um, commandments are things like you know you're not allowed to have relationships with your co-workers things like that this is a company which you know evidently works with lots and lots of international businesses yes they work a lot with french clients and do most of their work with french clients but they are also shown to work with clients from all over the world so they would be you know even though they might not agree with these commandments they would not have been shocked by them and you know they would have had some understanding of the way that other um you know other countries and other corporations operate lots of um um international business uh, in paris again is very diverse there are lots of international businesses there um so even if they hadn't experienced this in the workplace their friends would have experienced this working for international companies or working for companies that worked with international companies um you, you know like i said there are so many different um beliefs and ideas in paris but the show just portrays everything as just parisian everything is just parisian and it's incredibly superficial as opposed to addressing the fact that it's a diverse city with lots going on and not while some people are going to really agree with the commandments some people are going to really disagree with the commandments and that's not a matter of them being whether they're from paris or american or whatever that's just different opinions um so yeah it does an issue with just every single character in the show every single character in the show is close to new ideas and only wants to push their own agenda and this um comes across uh, this crops up a lot um in the workplace environment a workplace which is not really well defined and kind of only exists so that people can make jokes now of course um it's a attempting to be a comedy you do get comedic you know you do have to write in comedic situations the issue is that there is no base for any of these situations to come up um you know the emily's job is the reason why she's been brought to paris there is no depth or development there another huge issue i had um uh with the show is that there is a whole social media subplot where basically um emily is gradually becoming an influencer um and it's just it, it's just a weird subplot i had so many issues with first of all the whole thing lacks depth it is just about emily becoming an influencer that's it um as for how they show the technology they do the thing where you see what's on the phone sort of come up on the screen um sometimes it was fine sometimes it wasn't i wasn't 
entirely happy with it that's just a visual thing and that again is just something to do with taste um it wasn't completely to my liking but some parts i thought were kind of cool um yeah everything about the social media was just really flat it just didn't do anything it didn't go anywhere it didn't address anything um so what happens is emily gains tens of thousands of followers um during while she's in france because she's taking photos of herself in france um all sort of more strategic social media influencers that she meets are shown to be kind of vapid and shallow um which makes emily look good because she looks more genuine but ultimately social media influencers often do have to be very dedicated to their work in order to you know turn social media into a living um yeah fair enough some of them can be like vapid and arrogant and everything but they have to keep creating content as opposed to uh emily who kind of takes random photos often just random photos of herself um and shares them and then talks about you know stereotypical uh, parisian stuff and this seems to just sort of gain her a following for no real reason she doesn't really you know send out anything interesting or you know controversial apart from a couple of the uh things that crop up with uh the the show's bizarre attempt at feminism which i am going to come on to um, nothing that Emily posts is just particularly interesting or it doesn't make sense for her to gain such a following apart from the fact that, you know, she's uh, young and pretty and sort of living in a pretty city. Um, so the kind of judgment towards, you know, um, social media influencers um, being, you know, so uh, nasty and, you know, again, it's kind of similar to the, uh, f- you know, the way that they treat the French. It makes emily look good but it just doesn't make any sense um and if you really think about it actually social media influencers they're kind of having this is their job this is their work as opposed to emily who treats it like a hobby but gets really really famous anyway another huge issue i have emily takes photos of random people uh without their permission including other people's children and then just post it without consulting anyone um it's really it it it, it yeah, I'm against that. Just in general, you can't just take photos of people and put them on the internet. Um, that's not okay. Um, so well, as she's becoming an influencer, um, Emily betrays her workplace for social for selfish reasons. Um, to improve her social media following, she basically accepts an agreement to um advertise a product on her social media. Um. They uh, make it look, um, they make this look really cool. The whole system, it looks really glamorous. It's never shown as kind of a way for companies to get free advertising, which is kind of what they do. You know, they don't have to pay for advertising. They just get, you know, young people to do it. And sometimes there are cases where, you know, um, influencers are kind of exploited to, um, you know, um, uh, advertise these products and depending, uh, depend on the uh, the advertisements. Um, so, you know, Emily, they, they, this entire thing kind of lacks depth. I don't know why they do it, I guess, to show how it works, but they don't really show how it works, um, how, you know, social media and advertising works. Um, I think it maybe makes Emily look more honest because she doesn't really, um, she seems a bit awkward. Well, I don't know how it's supposed to make Emily look. They seem to like her, um, because she uses the word, um, berry instead of very genuinely that's what she does and they say this girl is a genius uh, which kind of just shows you how low the stakes are for emily if you know stuff like that is uh getting her through everything um yeah yeah like i said everyone just loves um emily's social media for no reason um uh emily you know never has to work hard with social media nor with her marketing so she you know that doesn't really help her as a character um i've also um and also quite frankly uh weirdly emily's social media kind of saves her from being sa- uh, from being fired because um her be- through her social media following she manages to um uh kind of start a debate again it's the le vagin uh debate about you know the vagina being feminine not masculine <sighs> again this stems from her ignorance and it's a way for social media to save her job but it never comes with any kind of lessons about the uses of social media i think one really interesting storyline they could have done is having emily gain this following and you know get really popular but show that how uh, social media can use be used to lie and how harmful it is um 
so uh, maybe have Emily lying about products she's having to advertise um one of the issues uh, the reason she was going to get fired by the way is because uh, she's not supposed to advertise products on her own she is uh, supposed to um, you know she works for a marketing company so she works for them so it makes sense that she shouldn't be advertising products without their permission um, but she gains such a big following that they can't fire her and they have to keep using her social media um, so yeah it's just kind of you know this whole social media being a protective power kind of thing an empowering thing it just felt a bit weird and I think it would have been interesting how um, you could have social media as an empowering thing, I guess. But also the fact that um, I remember, again, being in France, you know, my um, social media did not reflect the experience I was having. I was very homesick at various times. I struggled with money. I struggled fitting in. I struggled making friends. I struggled with loneliness. Um but my social media did not reflect that at all. So it would be really nice to have um, re- Emily face real struggles and for these struggles to, you know, continue, develop and worsen in ways. But her social media have to remain consistently positive. Um, it could have been a real comment on, first of all, how so- social media can be used to lie. But also you could have d- done the route of it, social media being somewhat empowering because you could just say that, actually emily uses social media to um as a kind of positivity outlet she tries to um you know keep almost a diary of um things that make her happy and that's what she puts on her social media and she doesn't share the negative stuff because she doesn't want to dwell on the negative stuff she wants just this one outlet where she can be uh happy um or even you could have done a lesson where basically the social media gradually shows that um you know there's the paris that emily shows on social media is not the paris that she's necessarily experiencing in real life um anyway the social media is just used to kind of track emily's journey they don't do anything with it they try to do stuff with it and they don't and it becomes a really major part of the show so it's kind of weird that well it's not weird that it has no depth because like i say this show has no depth but there are so many directions they could have taken it showing how people are exploited on social media showing how social media can be used to lie or can be you know a positive um outlet for some people um it could have you know really con you know shown how social media can contribute to things like stereotyping which this show contributes to all by itself um that you know there's so many directions they could have gone with a social media thing they didn't go in any of them it was just really really lazy um another issue is that you find out mindy um she when she tried to become a singer she went on um you know the chinese version of x factor um and she screwed up she became a meme it destroyed her life so she had to leave china so the show despite being completely pro social media um and having social media you know save emily's job and um you know be used uh for advertise as a good way of advertising and everything um it was a real missed opportunity to really explore that avenue when you realize that social media also kind of destroyed mindy's life um even though she seems consistently pro social media and seems kind of unaware of the fact that social media you know did a lot of damage to her mental health that she had to leave her home country and gave up on her dream of being a singer because she you know felt so insecure after being bullied online um you know she was cyber bullied and the show never addresses it it kind of just uses her as a funny meme um also um uh, emily never ever deals with any kind of hate on social media because of course she doesn't this also kind of supports the idea that all americans are just really really nice she gets loads of positive friendly messages it's natural that for someone with that amount of followers would get some hate mail um it's unfortunate but it's true and she never really does which suggests that you know all of her followers who are shown to be sort of more american in general um are just friendly and lovely and it's the you know again the nasty french are kind of the bad guys in the show um yeah and also um it never addresses how vacuous social media and publicity can be even though it consistently shows how vacuous social media and publicity can be so for example um there is a there is an auction um during the uh auction they uh auction address um which um is eventually destroyed um so everyone bids really really high amounts of money for you know to save an incredibly rich institution um and again you know uh paris is a city with a huge poverty gap 
it, it felt weird watching the scene for me because I've you know I've been there and I was on the other side because I was an intern where I was you know again um, you know sometimes struggling to make ends meet a bit and you know wasn't able to really save much money while I was out there even though you know I do need um, savings um, so watching people bid like really high amounts of money for um, the Louvre which is a very very rich museum it does need support but ultimately you know it's it's not like it's going to a charity or anything I think it would have been more impactful if um, this has been for charity I don't know why they didn't because that's a pretty cheap and easy trick that shows all doing doing stuff for charity um the the dress only exists for emily to sort of look good um and when the dress is destroyed it genuinely upsets the dress designer which i completely understand you know i you know i knit things i sew things um so his work being destroyed is really upsetting um and it's destroyed for a publicity stunt you know essentially for attention um and it never really kind of addresses the fact that marketing publicity and social media can be so vacuous and and mean little but can still damage people like it does with mindy and like it does with this dress designer um and after this um whole thing um you know after the auction and everything um when the designer is so distraught um you know a part of uh, emily's solution is that he needs to change his brand and he needs to you know revamp his brand but the thing is that's not how marketing works marketing you have to come again i haven't got loads of experience in marketing and people do rebrand and everything but this is like a really successful designer who's made a name for himself so why would he just suddenly go about and change his brand completely just randomly because of one thing so much of marketing you do have or you know with fashion houses is protecting um the integrity of a brand or a business so it's just another issue of you know emily not actually being that great at her job when you think about it um yeah this just you know this the the whole social media thing just emphasizes the fact that the show and you know um everything that happened there is no substance the show has no soul it has no moral values it has no ideals and like i said i'm so i've been waffled on for long enough i had huge issues with the uh, portrayal of social media last thing i'm going to discuss um the whole show it's i don't know if it thought it was a feminist show because i'm i'm sorry well i'm not sorry creators of um emily in paris you took so much of my life away from me um but it, it it's not a feminist show um the whole show is weirdly sexual and sexist um you know there are um uh, yeah there are too many sex jokes in it um women are kind of sexually harassed and it's almost no problem uh, some women some of the female characters just lack so much depth um yeah um the way that it portrays uh, feminism is i think it tries to sort of suggest that the french are kind of um backwards and objectify women whereas you know americans are more forward thinking and progressive and care more about women when um so such as you know the whole le vagin debate how um in the french language uh, the word vagina is a masculine word i don't mean anything it's just a masculine word sorry i heard something it's just a masculine word um so it's made to look like you know how sexist the french are and how we should be angry about this you know um language you can debate how much you like about how um language encourages sexism and in plenty of times it does but in this case it's it's just the article of a word um and i think honestly it shows more about um emily's ignorance and the fact that she's rewarded for this ignorance as i said before then it says anything about the um you know f- uh, state of you know um women's rights in france um there was they also have um a debate about whether or not um n- you know female nudity on film is sexy or sexist um this uh felt really really clunky i think that there is a d- debate to be have there about um sexual liberation versus object ob- objectification of women and whether or not um you know a filmmaker if you know if they have a nude woman in the film who is meant to be sexually liberated is it their fault if she is then objectified objectified by viewers um 
that you know there is a genuine debate there but they don't really go into that that much um it's just you know one of these things where it suggests that all french people are perverts um and all americans you know uh have amazing respect for women but like have a quick look at american politics um they don't <laughs> you know um the most equal countries in the world still have issues with sexism and everything it never addresses american versions of sexism um or or at least not very well um and i think the irony is you know this show kind of shows tells us that you know uh, americans almost seem to love french stereotypes so having an advert um with a naked woman in it which is kind of so scandalous would have done great in america because they would have loved the fact that it kind of is um embracing stereotypes rather than fighting them um also they talk about you know male attention and the male gaze and everything this is a rom-com where male attention is you know basically what characters live off of um it's so um yeah it's kind of driven by um not to say that shows driven by romance are always sexist they're definitely not but this show is kind of constantly how emily gets uh approval from men and gets male attention and this you know kind of fuels her in various ways all the men who meet her you know are instantly in love with her um her relationship status is just such a huge factor in the show um so so much of em- emily's development surrounds about who sh- with whom she's in a relationship um and you know what's going on in her love life um i don't even think the show would you know pass the bechdel test if it tried um also um yeah it's just it's just a real demonstration of american ignorance um also another issue which comes with feminism um sylvie declares at one point that she is not a feminist um sylvie is you know a real matriarch in the show she's you know the uh you know the boss um there are a few matriarchs in the show um emily also has an american boss who only appears a few times but you know she's a high-ranking american uh, she's a high-ranking uh woman in you know the corporate world you know it's not tough as uh you know the news tells us every day um sylvie again has gone far in the corporate world um so it, it feels weird that you know um first of all they kind of have these matriarchs and that's not developed in any way um and also we never find out why sylvie says she's not a feminist i don't know if it's because she just doesn't care about women and women's issues or is because um she subscribes to a certain type of feminism and not another and i know that there are people out there who won't say that they're a feminist because there are certain things that certain feminists say that they don't agree with um again that would have been a sort of debate about how do you do you define yourself as a feminist if people who also define themselves as feminists are saying things that you disagree with you know that's a fair enough debate for a show to have um even a show of not great caliber you can still sort of bring that up as an issue um this just doesn't address this um yeah and again um emily is you know the um still you know america uh, the french is shown to be kind of more sexually liberal whereas uh um, you know emily is less and she's less tolerant of this and less accepting of this um this isn't really debated that much um i was trying to read my notes. i'm getting to the end of my notes and i think i was just getting so bored writing my notes as i did this this podcast is so long this is a podcast as long as like a few of the episodes of the show <sighs> Um, yeah again uh, i mentioned before emily was being sort of kind of harassed by a colleague it was very much normalized um emily and sylvie only bond when uh, sylvie no longer views uh emily as a rival for antoine's affections um their relationship still doesn't feel natural but again it kind of shows how despite the fact that um may, you know it, the show makes a huge deal about well it should, you know it's fair enough to make a huge deal about how um male attention shouldn't be important that's fair enough but it show then goes on to show how male attention is very important for the uh relationship between two these two women who work together so their relationship doesn't isn't doesn't feel like it's based off of mutual work respect or overcoming a cultural barrier or you know you know the fact that they're colleagues the fact that they're from different places in the world it come you know they bond and argue over a man (laughs) and you know the show is not aware of this um and yeah the show is so patronizing it has so many mixed messages when it comes to feminism it was really annoying to watch it was really embarrassing to watch 
um uh it you know there are so many bits where the show talks directly to the audience um and not in a very intelligent way yeah i really did not enjoy trying to watch the show be feminist when it, some parts some parts it was fine some parts it did okay other parts were very clunky and other parts just had no self-awareness at all finally we are at the conclusion i really need something to drink after this i'm really sorry if my voice is getting a bit raspy i'm still recovering from my cold um the show is superficial it has zero groundwork zero depth there is no background there is no subtlety um we don't get any information unless it's like essential to what is happening in a certain scene so such as we don't know what emily's job actually is if she's you know um there to liaise with the uh american company if she's there to advertise to french people if she is there to advertise to americans we don't actually know what her job is we don't get any background information we don't know what her love we don't know what her love interest is called because we're tired um we as i in that sentence okay um i don't know what her love interest called i don't know what her love interest relationship with his girlfriend is camille i can remember camille um anyway yeah why is that relationship why isn't he breaking up with camille and getting together with emily it's the main crux of the show because again it's a romantic comedy but the romantic bit it hasn't thought through and means nothing and i don't care um it's just a show which had a very you know the premise is the title it's emily goes to paris um and the flimsy you know premise just stayed very flimsy um it's a long bore it's a it's not that long but it's a boring show it feels long i was so tired of you know watching it after you know by the fourth or fifth episode i was just so bored with watching it nothing happens it's slow it's not romantic it's not funny um yeah and above all you know that not being long and boring and not romantic not funny make it a you know a a bad show but it is so offensive and so patronizing and thinks it has morals that it doesn't have and addresses things in a weird way it it's emily in paris and i truly believe that emily in paris is going to become synonymous with terrible tv it's a tv show that was so bad that when it got nominated for a golden globes the golden globes were investigated and then nbc's findings of it that it was you know so um such a (laughs) bigoted organization led them led nbc to cancel um you know to stop airing the golden globe ceremony this show was so bad that it has changed um television award shows forever um and so yeah i think emily in paris will eventually become synonymous with uh you know terrible tv there is a lot of terrible tv out there which is fun to watch um you know i um i love watching things that are easygoing and you know don't mean anything and are completely mindless i love reading really easy um, relaxing books there is so much to be gained from you know easy tv shows or terrible tv shows i would just warn people that the moral of the morals in emily in paris are not just terrible but dangerous in many ways and that is the main issue that i have with the show um lack of depth i could survive i struggle to survive on this but it's so problem this show is so problematic um i could bang on and on about how problematic it is for another sort of hour and a half but i think you've heard me wait enough so michelle i'm never going to forgive you for this and please recommend me a book or a a film next time recommend me a film please i'm reading quite i'm I'm reading jaws at the moment it's really good recommend me a film or like something that is less than four hours please i'm not gonna forgive you for this michelle but this has been beaver curling log tossers i don't have an outro yet i'm just gonna stop recording now